Welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. I'm Village President Al Larson. In this episode, we'll talk with the Prairie Center for the Arts about their upcoming season. Then we'll hear from representatives of the Almost Home Foundation about their animal rescue efforts. And then we'll finish out the program by catching up with the fire department. All of this and more today on Speaking of Schaumburg. Opened in 1986, Schaumburg's Prairie Center for the Arts has become one of the premier performance venues in the Northwest suburban area, hosting local entertainment as well as international touring acts. Here to tell us about the up upcoming season is Cultural Commission Chair John Flamini. John, welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. Hi, how are you today? Yeah, well, how long have you been on the Cultural Commission? Uh, I think I've been on the Cultural Commission approximately, I'm going to guess, I think about 15 years. Yeah. yeah. At my age, it's difficult to remember something. <laughs> what's, your, what's your background? What's your, what's your background? Uh, I was the uh, coordinator of fine arts in Schaumburg School District. Um, I was there for around 34 years, retired about 14 years ago. You also play with a musical group too, don't you? Oh, yes. Uh, played with uh, jazz groups, uh, did television and radio. And what do you play? Days. Uh, percussionist. Okay. All right. I've seen you at the, at the Prairie Arts Fest, too, right? Don't you have a little bit of a booth there sometimes? Yes, sometimes we have our groups there, and uh, I've been there with various groups, you know, playing jazz. and. What's, what's your group called? What, what's, what's the... Uh, the last group I was with was the, called the Mueller Group. And um, uh, I... I'm assuming there's somebody named Mueller then who was... Yeah, he was the leader of the group, so <laughs> okay. that's why we... Rather than the Flamini Group. Yeah, it wasn't the Flamini Group. It was the Mueller Group. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So you taught in School District 54. I did. I was actually the first band director in School District 54 at um, Keller Junior High School when it opened back in 1967. You were just a kid back then, huh? I was. I was uh, probably 24 years old. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm a little older than that now. Okay. Not, not that much, but... No, nah, just a little. It does, really doesn't show, John. It really doesn't. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about the season. What, 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 what's happening over here? Well, we have um, just, just a, a potpourri, so to speak, of all kinds of different types of music. Enough, I think, to... Uh, uh, for anybody, you know, to come and enjoy. Well, tell, tell me a little bit about the poor po potpourri here, you know. Okay. Na name some of these potpourris. Sure. You have uh, Capital Steps, which is a group um, maybe many people here in Schaumburg will be familiar with. And at this time of the, uh, of the year, especially, uh, we're into the uh, political season. And uh, there'll be plenty of fodder, I'm sure, for these guys to come and, uh, and make a few uh, Yeah, jokes. you know, that, that group started as an office party for, for Senator Chuck Percy. Did you know that? Yes, I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah. that's a, a, an interesting beginning for them. Yeah, yeah. they were all, all staffers, and they decided to put together a, a satire, you know, poke fun at everybody. They take no prisoners. Both sides of the aisle get punished, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's just hilarious. I've, I've seen them uh, several times now, and it's just, I, I keep going back no matter what. Uh, you've got some vocalists coming coming on here too, don't you? Yeah, we do. We have, um, we have uh, Sean, um, oh, what is her name? Sean Colvin. She's an uh, uh, excellent vocalist okay. and guitarist. Plays uh, and, and sings just, just wonderful. And then you have uh, tribute groups. We have a couple of those. We have uh, Simon and Garfunkel. Uh, tribute group. We have uh, one that's um, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, which I think is going to be. That's going to be awesome. wonderful. That's yeah, it is. Great. I'm looking forward to it. I am too. It's, it's, my, it's, yeah, it's one of my favorites. Kind of music I like. Going to have the three Ellas yeah. as well. Now, the three Ellas have uh, not been here as a trio. Uh, they have appeared separately, two of them. Spider Saloff, is that her name? Yes, yeah, Spider has been here before. Yeah, she's great. Yes, she is. And Dee Alexander has been here before. Okay. Uh, but by, by herself had, or with some? Or, uh, so. by, by herself. And then we've not had Frida Lee, though, before. So the three of them together uh, doing uh, the uh, first, first lady of songs music is going to be great. That's going to be wonderful. Yeah, That's right. well, yeah, looking forward to it. What about, uh, what about guitar players? I know that we, we have somebody on the, on the Culture Commission that, that, likes, that likes guitar players an awful lot. We do. Yeah. Who would that be? 
<laughs> Big John Latko. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, um, what about guitar players? Well, I'm thinking that uh, Bodines, the Bodines will be uh, uh, a very interesting group uh, playing uh, rock music. And I'm sure they'll have... Now, what's, what's, what's the opening act for, for the season? It's uh, Simon and Garfunkel. Tribute. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be fun, too. Yeah, that'll it sure is. It sure is. Yeah, looking forward to that. And it, it, the season runs for... What, what, what is, was that in October? or, or no, when, when is that? It uh, begins uh, September. I think that one is September the 22nd. And I think the, uh, the last one you're looking at in the program is probably around uh, April. Okay. Yeah, and I think that one is, uh, matter of fact, that one will be kind of fun too. That's Clay Jenkinson and uh, uh, as Teddy Roosevelt. Oh, that's right. He's got John Williams from WGN is going to be the interviewing Teddy Roosevelt. Yes, that's always fun. Oh, yeah, that, that should be great. That should be great. We had him out here uh, uh, doing, uh, was, it, was, it, was it Jefferson? or Jefferson. Yeah. 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 And, they, and it's neat the way they do that too because they, they uh, tie it into what's happening today. You know how it was then, and sure. how that ties into uh, what's sure. happening today. So that makes it extremely interesting. That, 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 should, should, that should be fun, Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, yeah. looking forward to the it. bully pulpit, you know, and, and, <laughs> and the, the bull, bull Moose Party, the guy who was, uh, who ran as an independent, and uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Now, if someone wants to get tickets, uh, who do they contact? Who do they call? Actually, they can uh, either call the Prairie Center or they can go online to uh, PrairieCenter.org. Okay. And uh, you can easily order tickets online, and it's it's easy. It's um, also you'll find that there's um, discounts for uh, for ordering. Let's say if you order three of our programs, uh, you get a discount when you order, like fifteen percent. Okay. And there's uh, more discounts. I think there's a programs. senior discount too. I think yeah, I, absolutely. I, I, I know I about I, that one. I do too. <laughs> I know. I raised my hand right away. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, looking forward to to the whole season. It's going yeah. to be really good. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there isn't there a, another another event, a, a celebration? Yeah, celebration comes uh, the week before the first program. Okay. Um, the celebration is uh, uh, actually a foundation uh, program. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's presented by the foundation, the Schaumburg. And uh, that will be uh, all just all kinds of food. Yeah, they turned this whole place into a They told it, a, turned a it into a big party here. Yeah, there's a it nightclub is. right here downstairs, you know. Absolutely. They go yes. out on a plaza. Mm -hmm. There are groups uh, it's placed at several places outside if it's not raining. There's <laughs> dancing on the stage. Dancing on the there's stage. An, there's an ABBA tri tribute group. Yes. Yeah. You know, yes. Yeah, but that you know, in case you don't know, that's a Swedish group. Uh, by the way. I knew that. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> I I don't think there are many Italians in that group. <laughs> they're not blind, right? <laughs> they are. <laughs> blind. Yeah. Hey, John, it's great to have you on the show. Thank and, you. And thanks, Thank you. thanks for the for the update and, and what's going on, and, and uh, look forward to, to seeing you at the Prairie Center for the new season. It's my pleasure. Glad to be here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Five local animal lovers have banded together to help find homes for abandoned and stray animals. Find out how they're doing it and how you might adopt your own furry friend next on Speaking of Chamber. The Almost Home Foundation is a volunteer-run not-for-profit organization dedicated to rescuing stray and abandoned animals from surrounding communities and finding them the perfect home. Here today to tell us about the organization is, is President Linda Weika. Well, welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. Thank you very much. Well, uh, tell, tell me, uh, how does the organization start? Is it five friends? That... Actually, um, we're five founders that we were friends. We were with another organization, and we decided that we wanted to save more animals' um, lives. So we decided, hey, why don't we just go ahead and start our own little thing? And that's how five of us started this place. What, what, do you have a, a building someplace, a, no, an office no, someplace? we don't. We just basically, how we run is we work out of uh, temporary foster homes. And okay. some of the animals that don't have a place, we just board them at uh, vets facilities and stuff. How many animals do you have? Uh, approximately about 187 dogs and probably about 127 cats right now. How do you keep track of that? 
Very easily. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have a lot of uh, uh, database things and a lot of skills with computers and things. Okay. All right. So, so people, you have foster homes. Do you find that when you, when you when you have a foster home for a, for a, a dog or a cat that the, that maybe they want to keep the, keep the animal or? Oh or? yeah, that does happen. That happened to myself as well. Yep. You just come so attached to them that you find it's hard to give them up. But then there's other you know people who say, you know what, I know there's a good home out there and I could keep helping more animals if I just go ahead and find a home for them. Now, do you, do you have more cats than dogs or more dogs than cats? Or? More dogs than cats. Okay, why, why is that? Um, probably because right now we tend to find that we find that we can get more foster homes for the dogs than cats. And even though the population, probably there's more cats out there than there are dogs. In terms of, in terms of, 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 of dogs, what, 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 should, what, what breed do you have the most of? Um, do, do the local strays that come in the most are um, chihuahuas, believe it or not. Really? And, and pit bulls. And what? Pit, oh, pit bulls. Pit bulls. Mm-hmm. Those are the two number one that come in a lot. Okay, okay. really, really. Yeah. And, 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 and demand is for, for which, which breed is, is in the most demand? Neither of them. Really? Yeah, the most popular dogs that people really look for are the small, little, cute, little fluffy dogs. And um, the bigger dogs just don't seem to go as quickly. And chihuahuas, chihuahuas is just, they're not, you know, they're just people like little cute fluffies and labs and... There's breeds specific that people seem to uh, like a lot more, but... Like, what, tell me which, which ones, what like, breeds? Like uh, Poodles, Bashans, Maltesers, Shih Tzus. Um, labs can go in there. Um, just little dogs like that. Wired hair terriers. Okay. There's, there's a color preference too, isn't there? People... Oh yeah, there's a big color preference. It seems like black is the color that people just don't seem to, they, they feel it's not appealing. So there's a lot of black cats, black dogs. Do you um, think it might be a superstitious thing as far as the black cats are concerned? No, I think it's just about, I, I, well, it could be, but I think it's, it's color. People, for some reason, it's all about color and I don't know why people so have that into their minds about that. So we try to educate people that it's not all about color. Okay, well, what, what about cats? What, what, uh, what, what variety of cats? Are they all mostly short hair? Uh, they're all different, they're all different. I mean, you know, the, the, because we don't pick certain colors that we rescue, we rescue whatever just needs our help. So there's no specific colors, we get all different kinds. People call, call you, I mean, uh, up and say, I've got a dog here, I, 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 would you take this dog or, or? No, actually they're mostly, they're strays, they're local strays that we find from the villages that are picked up by the police departments. Um, you know, as far as uh, that's how it is with the dogs. The cats, the cats we find that are dumped somewhere and not wanted as well and we just look to help those really. We do help other, you know, people that say I can't keep my animal too, but it's mostly the strays that are abandoned and stuff. Are there feral cats that you, that you people call, call those yeah, in Yeah, they on? do. They do. There are feral cats, although we find that we don't have the real, all the capability to help all the ferals. Um, so there may be other groups and things that can help out with that. But it's, it's really hard, you know, when you've got a feral to adopt ferals. Do, do you have families where you have cats and kittens? Is it like a, like a package deal here where they... Well, there's certain ones who like to take care of the baby kittens and certain ones who want, you know, the cats or declawed. And same thing with the dogs. Certain ones will want puppies to foster. Certain ones will want, you know, little. Certain ones will want big dogs to temporary house. That's interesting. That's mm -hmm. interesting. So if somebody wanted to, to, to uh, adopt a, 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 one, of your, one of your pets or one of your dogs or one of your, one of your cats, mm -hmm. how would they do that? Um, well, basically we have a website, you know, they can go on our website and see all the animals that we have available um, because they're all on there between puppies and adults. Um, and also we do every week we do adoption shows at the local PetSmarts. We do three of them in the surrounding areas here, two in Schomburg and one in Bloomingdale, where we bring all our animals out so people can view them, meet them, see them as well. Okay, and what's your, what's your web website? What, what? It's uh, www.almosthomefoundation.org. Okay, how, how long have you guys been in existence? Uh, we've been in existence for about seven years, and it brings on a big smile to my face because uh, we've saved over 7,000 animals since wow. we started Almost Home. Wow, 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 wow. So, so you get them from police departments? Uh-huh. You know, from, from, all, mm -hmm. from all the communities around? I imagine you get a bunch of them from Schomburg. Is that? Oh, yeah, we do. Oh, yeah, we do. We do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you, you brought somebody along here. Yep, I did. I sure did. She, oh, she's sleeping right now. Uh, this is Elsa. Elsa is a stray that was found. Oops, she heard her name. 
uh, that was found just running around loose as a stray. Um, and uh, she's approximately about eight years old. And we did have a, there was a, uh, since she's a Rottweiler, we did have a Rottweiler group look at her and they said she was too old, so they didn't want to take her. So in my eyes, that, that makes me sad. So we They don't want their heart broken, I guess. Yeah, it, that's probably what it is. But you know what, just because you're older doesn't mean you shouldn't get a chance. Yeah. And that's why, you know, I have, I have a weakness for animals, as you can tell. Yeah. Um, and so no matter what, she's the sweetest dog, the most lovable. I'd put her with kids. How could you say, you know, you don't have a right to live because you're too old? How many, how many foster homes do you have? A lot. A lot. What, what's a lot? What's a lot? Uh, a yeah. lot. <laughs> a lot. Double digits. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, typically, how, how, how long does a foster Parent, parenting, you know, how, how long is, it, is a typical foster? It depends. It depends. Some of them can be, a, you know, a week, two weeks, three weeks. Some of them can be a year. It just depends. Some of them can be five years, like the black cats. You know, it just depends. You th so do you, do you think maybe part of the black cat thing has to do with, with the, you know, their bad luck if you see a black it cat? It could be. It could be. Yeah, and they're just not as appealing as, you know, and, and as, as a more colorful cat again. Yeah, yeah, I've I've had I've had tigers. Have you? Yeah. Or orange tiger cats. Yeah, those yeah. are beautiful. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. Yeah. You know, we had a, a cat who thought th thought she thought it was a dog. Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen that yeah. happen yeah. too. Just throw a yeah. Bouncing ball, chase the ball, bring the ball back. Then after a while, it would bring the ball only halfway back. Halfway so it's back. Like teaching me, you know. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's cute. So, so uh, uh, again, uh, uh, typically, do, do, do they pay something? Do they when, when they adopt a, a, dog, a pet, do they pay, pay something towards the organization? Is right. There's an adoption fee, which uh, is like a donation, which okay. helps cover the medical. Okay. You know, their shots, their spaying, their neutering, their microchipping. You know, they get an animal, they're up to date with everything. Okay. So, so when a stray gets, when you get a stray, mm -hmm. they get a chip. Yep. You know, they, 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 they get, they get, a, they get, a, they get a, an inspection of physical, right? Yep. 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 And they get, they get treated for... For Everything, whatever. yeah, they're, they get totally vaccinated, microchipped, spayed, neutered, heartworm test, feline tested. They get everything. So you're walking out with a total vetted cat and dog. Okay, all right. And what, 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 your, what, what, what color is the favorite cat? You know, what, what Probably your favorite orange. cat color? Orange. Probably orange. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's the most popular. What's the most exotic animal that uh, that uh, um, you, you, you've you've had as a stray? For the cats, it would probably be like um, maybe like Russian blues or, um, you know, we do get those and as quick as, you know, you get something exotic or, or something like that, people really, their eyes open up and look for those. Russian blues, huh? Yeah, they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. Are they? Mm-hmm. And, and as far as dogs are concerned, what's, what, what, what seems to be the favorite? The favorites? Um, probably like a Shih Tzu or a Maltese. Because they're like some, some little lap dogs. Little lap dogs and yeah, that you can just, you know, cuddle yeah. and just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, that's great. This is great. Elsa, well, well behaved too. Oh, she's so good. She's very calm and she just, she loves everybody. She actually could even be a therapy dog. That's how calm she is. Now, do you give names, names to, to these, these creatures? Or? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> we do. They each get their own individual name, and we try not to use the name repetitiously, so that makes it very difficult. Yeah. So we come up with goofy names sometimes. <laughs> well, that's great. Elsa, awesome. so good to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you very thank, much. Thank you. The Village of Schaumburg is committed to providing the very best emergency services for both our citizens and those who visit our community and we'll hear from the people who helped to make that happen. Find out more next here on Speaking of Schaumburg. With five fire stations and over 100 shift personnel, the Schaumburg Fire Department is the second largest municipal fire department in Cook County. Here to tell us about the, about the safety and emergency medical services they provide to the community on a daily basis is EMS coordinator, Steve Johnson. Steve. How do you do, Mr. Welcome Mayor? Welcome speaking of Schaumburg. Thank you. Now, EMS, tell us what, what does EMS stand for and, and, and what does it do? And emergency Medical Services started back in the, in the 70s from the TV show Emergency that was a big promoter for this area. Dr. Stanley Zidlow started this program through a lady by the name of Jane Schwetman from, I believe, Inverness, promoted this because she had seen this on TV and wanted to know what kind of emergency services we offered to our communities. So as things have progressed through the last 
35 years. We have been now expanding our provider impact. We have 25 providers that are with the Northwest Community Hospital System. They oversee the program, but we actually kind of run it all together, all of our providers, which is all the communities in the area. Dr. Zitlow, had, had, you know, he, he's still around too, isn't he? Yes, he is. He's yeah. doing well. Yeah. And Dr. John Ortnow is now the project medical director for the system, and Connie Matera is the one who is the director of the EMS system for us. How many EMS personnel do we have? Throughout the system, there are over 1,200 paramedics. So it's quite a big system. How many here in Chamber? We have 82 at this time. Okay. Is everybody trained to be a paramedic? Or? No, they're not. Um, we start off as an EMT, which is the emergency medical service, just plain old EMT, emergency medical technician. And then you go on to paramedic. And after paramedic, then you can have the opportunity someday to what we call drop your certification and go back to the EMT, because there's a lot to maintaining our paramedic. Okay. I imagine there's an awful lot of training involved too, isn't there? We do this every month. We have monthly drills that the hospital actually comes out and does an in-service for us. Which hospital is this? Northwest Community okay, all promotes right. all this, but oh, the sure. three other outlying hospitals, which would be Northwest Community as the main, St. Alexis and Alexian Brothers and Lutheran General are our three primary secondary hospitals. Okay, all right. So they come out and they do a monthly in-station for us. They test us every month on the things that we learned from last month to see how much we retained. Okay. And then we have practical skill review every month. We do it in station with our own firemen. And we have our own continuing education for our own fire department also to augment the systems. Now we're the second largest fire department in Cook County, huh? I believe we are. I, the first one would be City of Chicago? Yes. Wow, that's, 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 that's very impressive, that's very impressive. Uh, your, your background, I mean, how, how long have you been with the department? How long have you, you been involved with EMS? I've been uh, with the department for 33 years. I started off on a private ambulance before that, four years with the Chicago Fire Department, and then I came out here. So I've been a paramedic now for 38 years, almost 39 years. You're not gonna retire soon, are you? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I stay healthy, I will stay be here. Yeah, now there's, there's some new equipment that, that the fire department just got. We have a, to, a new engine and a new truck company They're from Pierce. We try to replace them every 10 to 12 years as frontline apparatus because the technology changes. Yeah. So we just got those into place. Some of the new technology. And then we got some over here, right? Yes. Let's say, uh, that is our ladder truck. Yeah, that's a beautiful piece of machinery, isn't it? That goes up, what, 10, is that? 110 feet, 110 about feet. 10 stories. Yeah, and what are we looking at here? This is the nozzle for the water supply. For this large volume of water, 2,000 gallons a minute, you wow. can fill a swimming pool in just under five minutes. What does that equipment that cost? It's, 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 uh... Between $750,000 to almost a million now. Okay. Per apparatus. And we got, we got two of those. That We've got two of those. Spanking, spanking brand new. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And some of the other new equipment that we're working on for EMS is we're using the hypothermia resuscitation. Okay. That when you have cardiac arrest and we, do, we bring you back, we start cold fluids to, to help keep your brain alive. Okay. So this is a new thing that we just started in May, and it seems to be working quite well. We had four saves in May and three in April already. Wow. Where they're clinically dead, they've been dead for a while, we've brought them back through our efforts and the hypothermia cooling. Oh, well, that's good to know. That's, that's really good Wonderful. to know. Wonderful. Really good to know. How, so typically, how many of these calls do you get? You mentioned you had four. How many in May? You... We, have, we, we do about 6,000 EMS runs a year. Only what we figure is five to 10% are true emergencies. Really? People, yes. people just not taking any chances? Or, or well, people call us because they don't know what to do. Whether you cut your finger or you sprain your ankle, they'll call us for an ambulance. For us to at least check them out and maybe give them a ride to the hospital because they're in pain. Sure. So we don't consider that really a true emergency. Even if we give you pain medication, it's not really a true emergency to us. You could have put an ice pack on it and probably driven. Sure. But the real serious ones are the car accidents, the strokes, the heart attacks. The ones that we actually prevent, if you're having a heart attack and you don't go into cardiac arrest, that is so much better that we've actually prevented the injury from getting worse. But we don't look at that as a real 
big save because we didn't save them, we just got them to the hospital in time. Sure. So it makes our statistics a little different. So out of the 6,000 runs, we have do about 40 to 50 cardiac arrests a year. Okay. Our system now is about 41% save rate, which the national average is less than 10%. Wow. So we're doing it much better with this system because of the new equipment we're using, which is the hypothermia. We have new impedance devices called the rescue pod that we use to help increase perfusion into the lungs, into the heart. What, what rescue pod? Explain it's this called a rescue pod. It's a device that we put on a tube that we put into your lungs, and it increases the pressure of the ventilatory um, breaths that we give you and it forces more oxygen in there, keeps it inflated, and also helps perfuse the coronary arteries better. So we get better resuscitation efforts on our compressions with CPR with this device, along with the cardiac um, hypothermia. You sound like a doctor, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this for a while. I, I can imagine. How is that? that has changed quite a bit, hasn't it? From the old times that we would give the sodium bicarbonate and just shock people and transport them to the hospital, now we try to get you alive have resuscitation return before we ever transport you anymore. Transporting somebody while doing CPR generally will not be any benefit to the patient or to our staff members being not secured in the back of an ambulance. Mm -hmm. So at the point that we do resuscitate you and we get a heartbeat back, then we will transport you. We have all the equipment in the back of the ambulance that you would see in an emergency room. We do the 12 lead EKGs. We have drills that we can drill into your bone to give you IV fluid if we can't find a vein because you are in cardiac arrest. We have tubes we put in your throat. We are able to use that rescue pod. Once we get you back, we use the hypothermia treatment. We keep you sedated because now you can imagine putting all that cold fluid with inside you, you're gonna shiver. It's yeah. not gonna be comfortable if you're awake. Yeah. So if you're awake, we won't need to start it, but if you're not awake, we'll give you sedation and give you that medication and the cold fluid. That, that, that cold fluid, that's, that's somewhat like when a kid falls into a pond or something. Correct. And is under, under that cold water for a period of time. Is right. It, and that, uh, we keep our fluids at 39 degrees. So okay. we have the ability to do that and it's working great. We also got new computers for computer-generated reporting this year. We're using the new Panasonic and that we can download all the information from our life packs, okay. all the information that we recorded, which is their oxygen saturation, their pulse rates. Their and you're in constant pressure. communication with, 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 with the hospital too, aren't you? We get in communications when we're ready to go. We do okay. all of this on our own. That's okay. why the training is so intense. That okay. We do the emergency stuff first. We're not going to talk to the hospital because we know what to do. If okay. we run out of things to do, then we'll call them and ask them if they have any, have any ideas. Okay, all right. Then you, okay, that's great, that's great. You guys, uh, you guys done a great job. It's worked well, I'm living proof. It's happened to me twice already. Uh, really? Mm-hmm. Worked out at the firehouse, I wound up having a heart attack and while they were transporting me to the hospital, I went into cardiac arrest five times. So they brought me back the first time and I kept coming back and then after some rehab, when I took over this position from Dave Grant, who passed away from a motorcycle accident yeah, while he yeah, was on vacation. Yeah. And then uh, almost three years ago, I was working out again on the treadmill, and I collapsed on the treadmill, went into cardiac arrest. Is your middle name Lazarus? Oh, it's My tough. heavens, my heavens. So they resuscitated me that time, and I got drilled. I had a, an IV in my shin, and they did CPR about 15 minutes worth on me, shocked me another four times, and brought me back. And I was awake and talking and route to the hospital. Living proof. Living thank, proof it does thank, work. Thank heavens. Yes, thank Good you. to see you. Good to see you, Steve. Hang, <laughs> it works. Hang Steve. around. Well, I don't, am don't, trying. Don't, don't be retired. This is all the things that they tell you. It, it really does work. This Call us right away. Okay. We talked about Rosie O'Donnell the other day, yeah. how she was having a heart attack and she Googled that information. And she took the aspirin, which is what you're supposed to do. Then you call 911. Yeah. Not wait 24 hours and call your doctor in the morning. Okay. Thanks, Steve. My pleasure. That'll do it for this edition of Speaking of Schomburg. Join us again next month for an all-new show. Until then, I'll see you around town. <laughs>